Hey guys, welcome to the channel. This is my uh, project right now. This is my Norwood HD36 sawmill. Um, pretty good, pretty good machine. I like them, they're okay. You know, it does the cutting. There are things I don't like about them. And uh, I'll just quickly go over them. I hate, absolutely hate the, the rests. They're terrible, they're horrid. They're the worst. Um, just gonna be honest, don't like them. Um, it'd be great if they had a different setup. Like we had on these, they make them so that you can, there's like a hand crank that would mount right here we had on it and it'll like lift it up and stuff like that. They're terrible. They don't work. They don't work at all. Um, we have used these things like this part of it like once. Um, they're like the, for when you're turning the log. Um, I hate the fact that I have to reach over to undo these. It drives me nuts. Um, I hate how these are just, they're flimsy. They just, kind of, they just go wherever they want to. They don't hold square or anything. They, they're, they, they suck. They just suck. They're terrible. So, in the future, that's one of my projects. Like, we had, so these had the chain on them. We actually made these levers to switch it back to the standard. Because either we didn't have the standard ones or whatever, but I actually just made those. Um, the dogs, these are actually pretty nice. These work out really well. Um, I just don't, not a big fan of this whole tube steel thing they got going on here. It's weak. It just, like the whole, of course this is the one that doesn't because the pin right here is bent, but um, the whole thing just, it's just flimsy. Um, you can just, you know, they have nice features about them. Like you could just pull these pins out and pull this whole tube out and everything, which I mean, it's kind of nice when you need it, but when do you really need it? Um, some of the downsides to this machine are that this particular style of frame, I think they changed it, um, doesn't stay straight. It, I mean, it stays straight like this, like in this direction, it stays straight, but like it, you know, the ground sinks and everything under these things. If you were, like this thing had the trailer package on it, you can actually see the axle over there. I took it off because like, we just don't use it. Like I've used it once. The one time I used it with the, to take it somewhere was when I went, the first time I used it actually, I went and cut a 36 inch diameter hickory. Yeah, that was, that, that was uh, a learning experience. Um, like it'll do it and it did it like a champ, but uh, yeah, I, not, not a, not, no sawmill is gonna be good at being driven somewhere and set up. Nothing about that works well when you go and put a freaking five ton log on something, it's just not going to work out right. So, um, yeah, so I put these big uh, tire uh, railroad ties under it, and um, the ground sinks and everything. And you know, this thing has been it's, it's been used and abused, and so it's you know, the frame is bent a little bit. So, I actually, actually had to add a dock weight on this side to hold this one down. And then loosen all the frame bolts, retighten them, straighten it all up. And I check it like every spring, make sure it's all good and adjust where needed. But that's about it. I'd like to put this on a concrete pad, but well, Joe Biden. So that's great. Um, so anyways, the plan is, is that is my stack of siding that I've been cutting. And all of these logs need to get milled. I'm lazy, kind of. I'm also very bored, kind of. I'm just very intrigued with things. So um, the plan is to make a CNC controller for this thing. Um, they, you, you can buy them and you can put them on, but they're like several thousand dollars. Um, I don't have that kind of money. So I'm gonna make my own. I got a power wheelchair and uh, I'm gonna use the motors from that. So there's different sections of this thing that we need to automate. So the first one is, is in order to automate it, we need to do the throttle, okay? So the throttle needs to be automated. We need to put a servo on it or something. And the interesting thing about the throttle cable is you notice there's two cables there. It's not a push-pull throttle. One of those is throttle. The other one goes actually to your lubricant. What it is is there's just a, uh, I don't know if I can, get the camera to see in here. Yeah, there we go. So you see that? 
It's just a plunger pushing against this tube. It's a real flexible tube. And this is a tank of water. And it just flows down and it goes over there and feeds right onto the blade, right at the guide. Okay, so we're gonna automate the throttle. And I think I'm gonna automate with a separate servo to control this. Um, I may end up using a pump because here's the thing, I hate that this water is up here. You have to climb up on this. And like, just to show you like, right now my head height is about right here. So I have to climb up to get to there. It's a long ways, it's annoying. So I wanna take and put a water tank down here, a big one. That way when I wanna fill it up, I just bring the hose and just pour it in. And just have a little pump and just run the hose along the side over there on some sort of cable tray or something and just have it go up on there that way. So, and that way I can vary the, 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 the amount of water. Now here's where it gets even more fun. So that's one thing we need to auto it. But I'll explain why I want to vary the water, the flow rate. Okay, so that's one thing. Next is we need to automate the throttle itself uh, going up into the motor. Um, again, probably use some sort of RC controller or something. I want to automate the motor starting. I also want to automate the the choke on the motor um, but I may not do that I may end up actually just adding a control on the machine where I can manually start it and warm it up um, just that way uh, I don't have to worry about the choke function because you want to start it up and warm it up anyways I mean it's you want to maintain your stuff another thing I'm looking at is so the blade guide moves in and out based on how wide the log is you know so come all the way out here all the way into there so I also want to automate that I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it yet um, I haven't decided for now I'll probably keep that manual now that's where the need to vary the water comes in because when you're running a really narrow width you don't need as much coolant when you're running full width you need more coolant that's where the machine would uh, have some logic in the controller built in to vary the amount of water based on the distance you're going and possibly based on the type of wood. Like if you're running like a dry oak, um, you're probably gonna want more water or like a hickory. You're gonna want more water than if you're just cutting pine. So that, you know, there might be a species selection as well in the, the controller as well. Um, so for lifting and uh, lowering, right here we have a crank. Turning this crank, you can see here, So that's how you lower and uh, raise and lower it. So I welded a sprocket onto there. And this is the, the bar. And what you're hearing is there's a cable break in the inside there. I don't know if I can get my phone to show you what it looks like. Yeah. So that's the cable break. It's kind of an interesting, it's adjustable up here. It's an interesting idea. So that's my motor mount. I'm redoing that. I hate it. I don't like it. So. That's where the motor for lifting and, and uh, raising or raising and lowering is going to go. And as far as measuring position, I'm actually going to use an encoder on the back of the motor, and I'll show you that. I've got one mocked up and done already. Um, so then for drive, so you have to drive the machine forward. So let me pull this up for those of you who aren't familiar with sawmills. So this whole blade and assembly just rode, uh, rolls right on this guy, right like that. Okay, so you raise and lower the blade, and then you just push this thing and it just goes. It's, and it's not like it's hard to push. It's, it's easy to use. Um, it just gets tedious. So, and, it, and especially with offloading the wood, it's better to have two people. I don't have two people, so I make this thing its own person. Yes, it will eventually be taking over the world. That's my plan. My sawmill is gonna take over the world. So, to drive it, I have a chain mounted down on that end. And I pull this thing taut. Like that. That's what's gonna happen. So, let's see if I can show you how this is gonna look. The motor sits right here like this. And there's a sprocket on the motor right where my fingers are. 
And so that's how it's gonna pull and push it. And then this end of the chain, is, it's not hooked up right now, but this end of the chain is gonna mount something over there. So that's the other drive. Um, as far as positioning goes for the, the, the vertical, and the, we'll say the Z and the X, um, the X axis is gonna use an encoder, it's the same as Z, they'll be mounted on the back of the motor. Um, as far as brakes go, I'm actually gonna be removing the cable brake on this um, because the motors actually have a, uh, well, I might, we'll see, we'll see what happens. The motors actually have electromagnetic brakes on them, um, kind of like an electromagnetic clutch sort of thing. So um, that's what we're gonna do there. The whole system is gonna run off of 24 volts, um, which is gonna be interesting because this motor does not have a 20, that I know of, a 24 volt output. I believe it's like 15 or something. So, and I don't think that this thing's um, stator can handle the amount of amps that we're gonna be drawing. So I might have to mount a um, an alternator in here. I'll show you where I'm gonna mount it. Let's pull the case off here. So the, the way that this thing works is actually kind of, it's really well designed on the inside. I'll, I'll be honest, it's pretty, pretty sweet. So this is the, there's the clutch and then there's the, uh, the main drive pulley there. So what they'll do when they're running a, um, an alternator is actually this bracket for the tensioner comes off and the alternator gets mounted there instead, um, which is a pretty smart idea. Um, really, if the alternator is spinning, you know, only sometimes, that's more than enough. Like it'll make the current just when the blade's running. And the thing is, is when the blade is running, that's when it's under load because that's when the drive is, is feeding it. So, and it'll be able to make more load than what the drive needs. So it'll be able to charge the batteries and everything. So I haven't figured out what alternator I'm gonna use yet, but that's the plan is make a new bracket, mount the alternator in there. And then there's there's room on the back side here. I might have to get a different belt size, but I can get a, a small, you can just kind of see the bracket there underneath there. Um, I'm gonna have to get a small alternator, a really small one. So we'll see how that works. And then I'm gonna, it's gonna definitely relocate. This pulley is actually gonna end up being, instead of here, it's gonna be, end up being like way up here. You know, because actually you can see the oil filter is right there. So I'm gonna have to move it this way or move the motor that way a little bit or something like that. Just to get a little bit extra clearance in there, depending on the size of the, the alternator. I'm not sure, we'll see. Maybe I find an alternator that uh, is small enough, but well, I mean, I know on my, I have a 72 Chevy and it had a really small alternator on it. Um, I was actually initially gonna mount it on the the drive shaft like the dude in NASCAR never got around to that. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's the plan, and uh, I'll kind of go through the design for the for the controller. I've already done a lot of the the work on the controller to get at least things mounted up and you know stuff like that. It's gonna have a LCD screen and switches, and it's gonna be fully waterproof. That way. It can, uh, you can stay outside and everything. So, yeah, that's that. Oh, another thing I was gonna do. Um, because water is difficult, gas is even worse. I hate getting gas in there. So I might end up putting a fuel pump and a uh, tank down here next to the water. So we'll see. And eventually, the I need to build this so it has the capacity to eventually be fully hydraulic. So, um, like the clamps, the 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 dogs, everything is going to be, um, everything is going to be hydraulic. We'll have a hydraulic um, loader, possibly. I don't know. This thing has a a winch set up on here so that you can uh, help roll the logs up. It works amazing. It's incredible. But um, it's tedious and cumbersome. But it does it does work. I, the first time we used it, it didn't have that. It actually had a hand crank winch on it and like I said we pulled up 36 inch diameter by 15 foot long hickory wet fresh very first time we used it and it worked it took a long time to crank it but it worked and it legitimately pulled it up on the ramps uh, there's the ramps you can see those down there that they use 
they're they're actually ridiculously strong so yeah so that's it guys um we'll uh i'll get into more of it later